Roma a Roma, qui la turbonave Cristoforo Colombo che vi chiama. La Cristoforo Colombo che chiama a Roma Radio, avanti pure 13.000. Kennedy Tower, Air India Jet 104, gate 20, RFR to London, ready for takeoff. Apache 795 Kennedy Tower, if you read the clear to land on my 13 left, one 180 degrees, 10. Yeah. The conquest of time and distance in communication. A miracle of the modern age. Messages flash from ship to shore, from cockpit to control tower, from news agency to editor's desk. Instantaneous communication, a primary need of our complex society, made possible through intricate systems of wires, cables, and radio. Telecommunications, have made the whole world neighbors. Yes, I would like to send a telegram to Tokyo, please. Tokyo, Japan. Samples approved. Expedite shipment. Operator, I would like to make a call to Stockholm, Sweden, please. 611235. Thank you. I'm still waiting. 3792. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mr. Alberto Torres. Mr. Benjamin Pauling. The story of telecommunications is an impressive record of constant technological advances and of a century of growing cooperation among nations. But how did it all begin? Following the work of several pioneers with electrical telegraph systems, Samuel Morse in the year 1837 succeeded in using the metallic wire as a carrier of coded words. His invention, called the electromagnetic telegraph, started a technical revolution. The tapping of this simple key marked a giant step forward from the drums and smoke signals of earlier times. In 1844, Morse opened the first public telegraph line. His invention was a dramatic success. It enabled man to communicate with his fellow human beings over great distances. Human messengers were soon replaced by the wire, but only within the limits of national boundaries. Before wires could cross boundaries, there had to be international agreements. In May 1865, delegates from 20 nations assembled in Paris to create the International Telegraph Union. This organization became the first international agency to coordinate a public utility. It brought into effect international standards of operation a uniform tariff system, and the use of the code of dots and dashes devised by Morse. Soon, distant parts of the world were linked by land lines and undersea cables, and the telegraph became an integral part of the commercial, political, and social dialogue among men. In 1878, another remarkable invention was born in the laboratory of Alexander Graham Bell, the telephone. It was a phenomenal achievement at the time. The crisscross of telephone wires soon changed the face of big cities all over the world. Millions of young men and women went to work in the new industry.
The end of the 19th century signaled another landmark. Tireless experiments by pioneers such as Marconi and Popov brought radio, the most versatile means of communication. The wireless transmission and reception of electromagnetic impulses offered unlimited possibilities. The work of the International Telegraph Union now embraced the telephone and the radio as well. In 1932, it was renamed the International Telecommunication Union. With its affiliation to the United Nations in 1947, the Union assumed the longest ancestry in the United Nations family of specialized agencies. This modern building in Geneva, Switzerland, now houses the Union's headquarters. Wind at 190 degrees, 8 knots. Expect an approach to runways 13 right or left. Uh, this is WA2 TDH, WA2 Thomas David Henry in New York City, Midtown Manhattan calling. WA2 Thomas David Henry, I guess it is, this is K2, TKB, Thomas King David in Fredonia. expansion of the various channels of telecommunications presents one serious problem. Telecommunications make liberal use of radio waves. The radio spectrum is overcrowded with waves scrambling around the earth every second of the day and night. This poses a constant threat of harmful interference. A primary role of the International Telecommunication Union is to prevent this potential chaos through international agreements on the use of radio frequencies. This is the task of the Union's International Frequency Registration Board, which maintains a record of radio frequencies in use throughout the world. Member countries are required to notify all their frequency assignments to the board. Each week, more than 1,700 such notices are received, submitted to a technical examination, and published in the board's International Frequency Register. Computers help to sort and tabulate this voluminous data. The Union also offers its members advice on all technical problems and has set up two international consultative committees, one for radio, the CCIR, and the other for telegraph and telephone, the CCITT. This well-equipped laboratory of the CCITT is designed to test microphones, loudspeakers, and telephone sets normally used in various parts of the world. These tests help to establish uniformity in technical standards.
To facilitate the day-to-day -day work of telecommunication services all over the world, the Union publishes a number of reference books. One of these is a list of all the telegraph offices of the world. Another is a list which every ship carries. In addition to facilitating the exchange of commercial telegraph and telephone traffic, this list helps ships in times of distress to make radio contact with the nearest coastal stations and ships. The Union also publishes information on current rates, newly opened services, and radio frequencies in active use. The development of communication facilities in today's world is startlingly uneven. More than half of the world's population have fewer than five radio receivers among every 100 persons and less than 3% of the world's telephones. The social, economic and cultural interests of these regions desperately demand more adequate links of communication. Throughout Africa, Asia and Latin America, telecommunication systems are gradually expanding in step with the general economic growth. But apart from considerable capital investment, highly trained staff is needed. The Union helps these countries meet this problem under the United Nations Development Program. An important part of the Union's aid program is basic training. This newly erected building in Kuala Lumpur houses the Union's largest training center in Asia. Here, students from many Asian countries receive training in the basic sciences related to modern telecommunications. Specialized training for professionals from developing countries is provided by fellowships offered by the Union every year. These trainees are attached to institutions in advanced countries. For example, this young engineer from Lebanon is receiving higher training at Stone in England. In 1960, the European personnel suddenly left the Congo and its entire system of telecommunications was paralyzed. The Union met the dramatic challenge and within a short time its team of experts had essential communications working again. But a more far-reaching problem remained. The existing networks were very inadequate and urgently needed expansion. With the Union's assistance, a well-equipped system of telecommunications gradually came into existence. The linking of the various provinces of this vast African country by wire and radio marks a substantial achievement on this continent. Most of Africa is sparsely equipped with communication facilities and a gigantic effort will be needed to develop an adequate network. A number of international experts from the Union are making extensive studies and surveys to meet Africa's essential communication problems. This is but one example of the Union's part in improving telecommunications in all regions of the world where the need exists. Each 
each day, new telecommunications links are created. What started as a simple system of telegraph lines has grown to a giant system of microwave radio relays and overland, underground and undersea cables. The giant has now spread his arms in another direction, outer space. The advent of the space age has added a new dimension to the field of telecommunications and new responsibilities for the Union. As member nations meet in Geneva in October 1963 on the allocation of radio frequencies for space projects, Secretary General Utant greets them from New York. Appropriately enough, his message comes via a satellite. The instantaneous transmission of sound and image from one continent to another by man-made satellites is already becoming commonplace. Masterpieces hanging on the walls of the Louvre in Paris are exhibited in the living rooms of millions of Americans. In France, Hundreds of thousands take a guided tour of the National Gallery of Art in Washington without taking one step outside their homes. A major heart operation with new techniques performed by a specialist in Houston, Texas is simultaneously watched by a group of doctors in Geneva, Switzerland. Sports fans in North America and Europe participate directly in the colorful opening of the Olympic Games in Tokyo. Such links between distant lands by means of the space satellite reveal the universal range of modern telecommunications. A worldwide network of satellites will bring millions of people face to face in a global conversation to enrich their lives. To harmonize the actions of the nations in this momentous achievement will be the task of the International Telecommunication Union.